a special anointing will rest upon these your servants. Well, makes sense to me. Some of you have seen it. Many of you have not. That is T.D. Jakes actually blessing or anointing or praying over, if you can call it prayer, over Lovey Elias and Passion Java. I pray that a special anointing will rest upon these your servants as you have sent them out into the vineyard to work in the heat of the day. I pray, God, that you would cover them and protect them and guide them and keep them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. To have them in your company means you have literally no discernment whatsoever. Now, I don't think that anyone, at least anyone who is uh, loving the Lord, understands and loves the scriptures, would ever say that or ever accuse T.D. Jakes of being discerning or really even honest. However, the fact that you see this happening here, him pronouncing blessings or anointing and so forth, whatever, and this is put out by Lovey Elias, because obviously he wants folks to know that. How better to kind of fix your image or to learn how to deal with a tarnished or sully image than going to someone who has a tarnished and sullied image, who just kind of, you know, deflect it, let it go, let it pass, let it die down and keep it moving. That's kind of the school of thought from T.D. Jakes. And so you go there and you kind of hobnob with them. And there's a reason why, but there's something that we don't even pay much attention to, but we ought to. The question, why they're there? What's going on with T.D. Jakes? What's happening at the church? What's been happening with him? And I mean, for the last 5, 10, 20 years. This is something that he does, and folks aren't talking about it. I don't need to be around important people. You unlock your favor in the earth. I need to be around powerful people so that I can see a better tomorrow. Slashing through limitations, preconceived notions, possibilities. God will allow you to taste your future. Because it's about to be your turn. The opportunity of a lifetime awaits you at the International Leadership Summit. This was part of his International Leadership Summit, and he's got these different folks coming in from different parts of the globe. And the question is why he's been doing this, not just with this conference, but with other conferences. You think about manpower and woman thou art loose and other things that he's got his hands in. Well, why is this happening? And oh, by the way, is this something that's more indicative of a lot of people who are called themselves Christians? Is this a bigger issue? It actually is. There's more and more people that you would think that are involved in these sort of things, and there's a reason why they're involved in these things. Well, what are these things you're talking about, Corey? Well, I'm talking about these conferences. Be visionary. If you are a visionary, if you are a leader, if you're planning on building anything, you need to be at ILS. When leaders are trained, when leaders are performing, when leaders are doing great, everybody else behind them is gonna do the same and follow in suit. Your uniqueness is so significant because it's only in your uniqueness that you become visible. The ILS is for every single leader who is ready to take your leadership and your life to the next level. You can't go a day, a week without being told there is some sort of conference coming up or going on. Now, some of the conferences are fine, but in most cases, 90 plus percent of these conferences are absolutely worthless. Well, I shouldn't say worthless. As a matter of fact, they're the opposite of worthless. They are valuable. They are lucrative. It's all about coming together, having a meeting, a discussion about something, and agreeing to reconvene and talk about the same stuff again next year. Put a different spin on it. Maybe invite a different person here or there, whatever, but it's a cash cow. And the people that come in, they get a chance to kind of be exposed. It's almost like you scratch my back, I scratch your back. I'll come preach at your church. You come preach at my church. I'll come to your conference. You come to my conference. We're, we're recycling the same things. And truth be told, we're recycling the same people. The only thing that's not being recycled are the dollars. We're getting new dollars, new amounts of money in. Buy this book, buy this course, sign up for this. Because you go there, you're going to have these different booths where you can buy things, shirts, videos, uh, download things, books, all those sorts of things. More importantly, I want to talk about what I learned and experienced today at the TDJ's Leadership Conference. And it was refreshing. Number one thing I want to tell y'all, because I want to get to some juicy stuff instantly, is um, make sure you're prepared and empowered to network. I did network. I definitely need to do some more, but I did do a good bit. I mean, think about it. There is conference after conference after conference after conference, all types of conference, men's conference, women's conference, uh, conference for pastors, conference for apostles, 
Conference for Profits. That seems like an actual useless conference, right? Why would prophets need to get together for some sort of prophetic conference? Don't you all know? Hasn't the Lord told you or shared with you? Can't you just make a video or decree or proclaim something the Lord has said, but you have to get together and talk about what? How you can, in many cases, just scam the audience. You go and you talk about this kind of stuff. And what it really is, is really like a multi-level marketing scheme, a pyramid scheme, where you get together and you talk about or motivate each other to go out and do the same thing at other places. You got to keep it moving when your feelings are hurt. You got to keep it moving when your heart is broken. You got to keep it moving when all hell is breaking loose. Because think about it, with all these conferences, what's happened? Nothing. With all these things about empowerment and changing the world and this is going to be an awesome time the lord is going to is going to show up and so forth what has happened what has been the fruits from all of these many conferences what happens they get together talk about nothing go home and do nothing why does a shepherd need to go gather with other shepherds to talk about what it's like to be a shepherd meanwhile leaving the sheep at home i understand there's some benefits in having these little get together between other pastors to talk about things that maybe uh, affect them, how they could kind of grow, how they could, you know, look at how, how, how you deal with this, how you deal with that. I get that. Some of these things are actually useful. Now, am I saying that all of these conferences are bad? No, there are some conferences that are actually really geared towards the attendee, the person is going there to learn of the Lord, a conference or a gathering where it's just really a a seminar to talk about different topics, different issues of the Bible and have different people flesh out. I don't have a problem with that, but I do have a problem where we're talking about things that, that are more motivational, things about uh, a person's destiny and growing them and being the next great person that you can be. These are the kind of things that someone like a Simon the Sorcerer would be very much interested in. Why? Because remember, in Acts 8, we have Simon the Sorcerer, who is, the Bible says, who was formerly practicing magic in the city astonishing the people of Samaria himself claiming to be someone great. We know it's himself because of this word, Yaton. So we know it's him claiming to be someone great. He wanted to be great. And when he sees the Holy Spirit poured out, what does he do? He wants to buy this gift from the apostle so that he can do the same thing. Why? Because he wants to continue to be great. That's the whole point of many of these conferences. That's why I say, ladies and gentlemen, follow the money. Now, the Bible talks about those who desire to get rich, those who want to get rich. They fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires, which plunge men into ruin and destruction. Why? For the love of money. The love of money is a root of all evil. These folks desire to have money, nice things, the fame and the fortune of power. Understand, even if they're not getting paid a lot, which, by the way, they are. Have you ever noticed what it costs to bring in some of these people? the speaking engagements, you want to book some of these folks. We're talking about tens of thousands, I'm talking about multiples of tens of thousands of dollars to bring a person in to speak, even if there is no um, fee to pay them, you are, you're going to get an honorarium. You're going to get something where you take up an offering and you think you've got a few thousand folks over the course of days and they're giving offerings and they take up, they take up multiple offerings, not just one offering, but two offerings, three offerings. Also, maybe something to give that per person individually, go out to the to the tables and buy their books, buy their gear, what have you, sign up for something there, give money there. And then they also get an honorarium for them. So it's not that they're coming there for free to do it for free because they thought it was just so worthy. The gospel, uh, the people of God are so worthy of this. Well, if that were the case, they would stay where they were. They would stay in their cities, in their locale and continue the work, the mission that they were entrusted to do. Truth be told, they are fulfilling their mission. Their, God, their job is to grow their brand, to grow their particular ministry, to grow their footprint. That's why you see them there. You'll see this person go to that conference and then affiliate with that person at that conference, forgetting the fact that the people that are there are not godly people, people that have already sold out the ministry. Noel Jones there, he's already been described and been shown to be an enemy and a traitor to the gospel. And what God has done is, since no one of us has it all, he has fixed it so that each one of us have an idiosyncratic concept of who he is. It is critical to understand that each one of us creates God. It is your thoughts of God who makes God your God. And nobody can duplicate or imitate. So that's why we have to share. Every individual in here interprets their calling. 
Now, mother's interpretation of her calling is not within what we call the norm. Mother's interpretation of her calling is that she is the only begotten daughter. That's her interpretation of her calling. Here he is preaching about um, the only begotten daughter, Mother Moon, speaking about her and how wonderful and great she is. I'm sorry, but that's blasphemous. But a person who calls himself a person of a cloth, a bishop, a pastor, you should never listen to him. And wherever he goes, you should go the opposite direction. Same thing with Love the Elias. Same thing with Passion Java. These people, are all their, their only goal is to make money. Just go back and watch the videos where they're showcasing and flaunting their cash. But then even take Passion's own words. So you're doing all these things to sell your name by doing things that are controversial. There's a strategy to my foolishness. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. you agree there's foolishness in it? Yes. Foolishness sells more than wisdom. So are you foolish? Of course. So all of this makes sense. This is just conference after conference after conference. Promote me over here. I'll promote you over there. We'll come together, do this. I'll help you with your conference. Make it a big success. My name gets put out there even more so. So it benefits me. It benefits you. And then we'll have another conference somewhere else and another conference somewhere else. So you got this big network. And so again, I say, follow the money. You're going to see more and more of this. Now, where you won't ever see this is the Bible. You don't see Peter and Paul and James and John. Let's get together, guys. Let's have a conference to talk about how awesome it is for us and how we can grow in our apostleship, how we can grow in our ministry. We don't see that. We never see that. Matter of fact, what we do see is them being persecuted for their ministry. These leaders don't want anything like that ministry. They want to claim the mantle. They want to claim the same level. They want to claim the same authority as some of the people that we see in the Bible and that they're on the same team, but they certainly don't want to suffer the same fate. Now, does anyone want to be crucified upside down or sawn in half? No, but these people want all of the benefits of ministry and never the suffering. They don't even want to labor in the scriptures. Name someone at these conferences that you put a whole lot of biblical clout in. Name some of these folks that you think that these folks are adept at handling the scriptures. That's not a one. There's not a one on there that I would think that we even pass a Bible study exam or test that we give here on this channel. I don't think that they can even outform or outthink or even outteach the people that regularly watch this channel or the main channel, I should say. You won't see that there with them because their whole point is to motivate you into doing nothing, but also more importantly, to motivate each other and to motivate themselves. And so, yeah, that makes sense. T.D. Jake's praying over Lofi and Passion. It makes perfect sense. Why? Because birds of a feather scam together. And so, it makes perfect sense to me.